There's a very dangerous narrative going around. Very dangerous narrative going around. And you need to call it out and keep an eye for it. Very dangerous narrative. It might seem like nothing, but pay attention. There's a narrative going around about, you know, the beef, if you will, <laughs> between the chosen people and the children of darkness, the barbaric savages, you know, might have heard of it, maybe. A lot of people might see what their chosen people, goons, have been up to, aka the IOF, also known as IDF, occupation forces, not defense, there is no defense. Then people will proceed to blame Hamas. It is natural to want to blame anybody. And as a civilians, you know, the people that paid the price for all this, mainly. People trying to live a normal life like you and I. And here come a missile or a bullet come hit them. It might be their natural instinct to blame Hamas. Sure. But what I don't like is in the media, the narrative going around of blaming Hamas for what's going on. Here's the thing. Hypothetically here, you got a, you got a son, I got a son. God forbid, your son come kill my son. God forbid. That's murder. I'm talking individually. Forget countries. Forget who's who. Your son come kill my son. That's murder. If I come and kill your son, and I go in court for murder, God forbid, and I'm looking at the judge like this. Do I get off? Do I get to go home if I just tell the judge? Uh, what you call it? Does it excuse my murder? Do I get to go home? Given the fact that your son killed my son? Does it make it less of a heinous act? I'm a grown man. Came intentionally, you know, God forbid, hypothetically, uh, came and killed your son intentionally, first degree, premeditated. Is it legal? Or is it self defense? Do these excuses work in court? If your son came and killed two of my sons, and I come and whack your entire neighborhood, is that legal? My country, your country, what is this? What the fuck are we doing? I'm a human, you're a human. Oh, right, I'm not a human, right? I'm a barbaric animal savage. I forgot. Pardon my barbaric savageness. We're not going to do that. Shut up. We just not going to do that, chosen people. Listen here. This is an attempt to absolve themselves of any responsibility. You need to understand something. In the beginning of this war, not that it didn't happen before, but in the beginning of this, Netanyahu, the rat, looked like Ratatouille, look at him. When he came out and said that we at war, shit. <laughs> Stupid lie at war, and he had to defend himself, which is a stupid statement. You occupy, you don't, you don't occupy somebody and get to defend yourself from him. You can't claim that. I can't come to your house to rob you and shoot you in my self defense. Nah. Anyway, when he did announce that, he said some. That went over a lot of your heads, which is that this war is not going to be just <clears throat> in the physical world, or that the war is not just going to be on. Um, I forget the exact quote, but basically that is it's on all fronts, you know, and that includes the cyber front. <laughs> the war on the cyber front is on what? It's on Facebook accounts? No, no, no. 
It includes that. But it is for the public opinion, specifically of the West. Arabs know the truth. They don't care how we feel. They had to convince the Western man that these are terrorist barbaric savages. Can't even reason with them. Again, I say the Western man, specifically American, because that's who let them get away with stuff and veto. What's the point of us meeting and voting if you get that veto? Anyway, the war is on the opinion of the white man. It's shut up. To convince him that they are the victim. They don't care how the rest of the world feels. The rest of the world knows the truth. We've been known. Those who know get their threats, like me and many others. I took them threats seriously because I know that the Mossad don't give a F about, don't give a fuck about a person of my skin color or my background, live or die. Their job is to convince you that they are cute. They don't hurt people. That is why the time that they did attack the U.S., for those of you that know, yeah, Israel attacked the U.S. knowingly. A lot of you know that story or just learned about it, but do you know why they did it? It's because at the time, before everybody seen their truth, a boat happened to intercept the USS Liberty, their communications, and they seen them for their truth. They seen them bragging, you know, I killed a 12-year-old girl, wow, Viva Israel. Just like they do now. They just, I just seen a video of them bragging about it. Liberty intercepted it. They said, oh, that boy gonna tell. No witness, no face, no case. And they attacked it. That is why they did it. But again, the whole war on a cyber front is to convince you. So their tactics include um, fake bot accounts. And it's been proven that they might take um, some accounts where they pretend to be Arab or pretend to be white to kind of confuse the, the, the masses. You know how you, if you're in a room, if you were, if I was to show you, what color is this? Red? Okay. If I put you in a room and you, and, ten, and nine other people, 10 people total, if I was to show you that bottle cap and ask you, is this red or pink? Regardless of what the color is, it's red. And I ask the nine people in front of you, I ask you last, like, hey, uh, what color is this? What color is it, red or pink? And they all say pink. And I come and ask you, the 10th person. So, hey, bro, hey, viewer, is this red or pink? You're probably going to say pink. Even if you, you know it's red. Even if we both know it's right. And that's what they've been trying to do. They've been trying to play this game of, of making accounts of that. <laughs> they try to, where they pretend to be Arab. Arab stand with Israel. Nah, bro. The only way an Arab stand with Israel, two cases. If he has hate towards Muslims or Arabs. So hatred. Or if you paid him, maybe he got business interest, like Arabia right now. So you might see this. <laughs> you might be like, man, but that doesn't. They targeting everybody. I'm not that big on YouTube or whatever. I know how big I am, but I've been a target a few times on YouTube or whatever. And I've noticed that 
They have been trying to appeal to the racist white people and activate this whole Islam equal terror in people's head. First of all, my brother, y'all took over that land via terror groups, Jewish terror groups. Let's keep it 100, all the way 100. Before you had an army. You did your first expulsion in Fort Nakba. You did it via Jewish terror groups. Well, did you have an army then? Who? Who, who did it? I don't know their names, but you can look this up. At that time, people were living peaceful, Jews included. And the beauty of that is, I got to see the narratives that they carry. Now, so a lot of the stuff I might tell you, be careful of this narrative. The first time you hear it, you might be like, it's whatever. No, it's not whatever. It's a big butterfly effect. And if the public opinion feels a certain way, synthetically, fake, you know. In Arabia, they do the same thing. It's called Dubab Electroni, electronic flies. So many of them, and they come and spew a certain narrative in an attempt to sway the public opinion. A lot of times it's AI, but Netanyahu hired people in the university, students, um, the Jewish Student Association, da da da. They brought them all together, and they even instruct them to lie for the benefit of Israel. Sometimes they say it indirectly, but they're telling them lie. And your lying is, 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 is a job. It's your duty to lie. <laughs> I kid you not. I can show proof for everything I'm saying. And the scholars, the Jewish uh, rabbis or whatever, they come up with justifications like... One dude said, "If it's okay to kill the children because they're just going to grow up and be terrorists. How do you know that? How do you know that? But that's what they say. Anyway, the narrative that it is Hamas's fault. Why did Hamas do this on the 7th? Now we got to pay. No, 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 no. Listen, my friend. First of all, Hamas touched no children that we can prove. No, zero. Al-Aqsa flood, Tofa Al-Aqsa operation was aimed at military targets, military bases, just like any other war in the fucking world. These people spun the narrative of babies. Came to be fake. We all know it's fake now. They killed civilians. IDF killed civilians via a plane on a festival because they were trying to kill Hamas. Hamas was not trying to kill no civilians. They needed them alive to negotiate. That's the whole point of this. It's not even in their benefit to do it. And they go by Islam hardcore, which tells you to never test no innocent, ever. But they spun this narrative nonetheless. It worked for a little bit. I stand with Israel, I stand, shut the fuck up. But to absolve themselves of responsibility now, it's like, look at Hamas. Like, I had some of the comments of those trying to spin the narrative. I posted videos of a, a girl crying. It's been circulated. The little girl crying, saying, what's my fault? What did I do to deserve this? You took down my home, strike my home. I can't get no food. Am I going to cry? Little girl crying. Here come a grown man talking about, well, you, Hamas shouldn't have done it. Tell Hamas to, they shouldn't have done What? Nah, motherfucker. Missiles don't kill people. These people are dying. They're not just people dying. These people are being killed. Let's be clear on that. These missiles didn't fall from heaven on, on, on these people because of what Hamas did. 
like some Bible story, Amalek, motherfucker. That Amalek bullshit alone shows your intent. You're not shy about it. So we're not going to do that. Because you either saying, oh, we don't want to do no genocide. That's not our goal. Nigga, you, your soldiers are bragging about killing a 12-year-old girl. This is January 3rd. I seen news that they hit a Hamas leader in exile in Lebanon. In his home, they striked his home. Wow. It seems that you are very able, when you want to hit somebody specific, (laughs) you strike him from a plane in his home. Very specific. Coordinates and everything. When over there, you're just like, it's like you in a bathroom in a club, drunk. A bunch of your people said, our goal is not uh, precision. Our goal is just destruction. You carpet bombed it. Then you got these bots saying, that's not what carpet bombing means. And then you got some people who help them with the bullshit. Like, them, listen, I'm going to test. Let me talk straight up. For the old white motherfuckers that be in my comments, I'm like, hey, yeah. I'm a vet. I know it. Shut the fuck up. You're not a hero. You've never been a hero. You're not a fucking hero. I said it. I'm a vet. I fought for your freedom. No, you the fuck you didn't. My freedom was never a threat, bitch. You think you're a hero? Would you have one and did what you did for no money? Uh, so shut up. Being a vet don't give you any, 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 any niggas sitting up there. I'm a vet. I'm hard. I'm traumatized. Nigga, you spent one month. Are you traumatized? Imagine spending your whole life over there. <sighs> Bitch ass nigga. You got them in my comments looking at the little girl and saying, yeah, that's what you get because of what Hamas did. Bitch ass nigga, she don't know Hamas. Babies in the incubator was not Hamas, bitch. Missiles don't kill people. Someone pressed that missile and sent it there. That's a murder. That's a killing. These people were killed. They didn't just die. Palestinians didn't just 10,000, 20,000 die. They wouldn't just die, nigga. Oh, they just died. And when you admit, when you can both see it clearly and you get to the point where you actually say, yeah, nigga, you killed. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. When you actually say, yes, you did, you say, uh, Hamas shouldn't have done what they did. What did they do? It's their land, bitch. They legally got the right to self-defense. You don't. De-radicalized. They don't want peace. Motherfucker, the UN gave us a shitty deal and we accepted it. You had them borders. You didn't stick to them. You kept moving outside, outside. International law says, huh? You with me? You come outside that border, you start moving how you moving, I can come and whack you legally. But the Hamas is a Prescribe terror group. Shut the fuck up. You supporting dangerous organizations and people. The same people who prescribe them terrorists, the same people who prescribe Andrew Tate, dangerous individual. <laughs> dangerous to who? We're not going to do that bullshit. Even if Hamas did everything that you lied about, even if let's pretend it's true, even if they did do it, it does not excuse you from doing what you did. You are a murderer. And when your humanity starts to snap, 
when you look at the ugly axes of yours <laughs> for a second, you're like, damn, this is horrible. Why'd you do this, Hamas? No, 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 don't blame Hamas. I can't blame your son for me retaliating, remember? We're not going to do that. Put the blame where it needs to be. This whole situation could have been avoidable. You just have to negotiate. Well, well, why did they take hostages? You can't just take hostages. That's not how anybody... Motherfucker, how about the million something? Million something hundred thousand that you got in there with no charge sitting up there. But do you know why they got him up there? You want to know why? I'm telling you, I'm from Arabia. I know a lot. Western people are just hearing this for the first time. I'm going to tell you why. Hit the like button, smash subscribe.